So, hypothesis testing, where we've been, where we're headed. We've dealt with single parameters. Yay, and they've been wonderful. We've dealt with single parameters. One little p and one little mu. We tested p hat and x bar, and we make conclusions based on the assumed values of the parameters. And there was great joy. And included in here are matched pairs, which give us great joy as well. Then we dealt with two parameters. When we dealt with little p1, little p2, little mu1, little mu2. And the difference between the two of them is that you actually legitimately have two independent populations to deal with. Yes. What I want to do next is I want to motivate multiple parameter testing. What happens when this goes to three or more? And I want to use as the illustration of this, the illustration of multiple parameters, uh, greater than two parameters. I want to deal with a problem that Apple had to deal with a few years ago. And it involved their iPod. I think I mentioned this in class on, because uh, me and Chris are just trying to set it up. I brought you a new cable and make it easier for us today. Apple had a problem. Well, actually, Apple didn't have a problem at all. Apple uh, uh, programmed their, their devices perfectly. The people that were using Apple's products thought they had a problem. And since Apple is a company, and therefore wants to make money, it became their problem. So, what we had with Apple was the, the, the iPod Shuffle, which, they still make that little tiny thing? Yeah. Well, they, they still make that, right? It's got one function. You put a bunch of songs on it, hit go, and then it shuffles the songs that are on it. No, no fancy playlist, no nothing, just one bunch of songs that come out. And the problem was that people were complaining that they were getting too many of one artist as they were listening to, the, to, the, to their, their string of songs. So suppose you have a, an Apple playlist that has two bands on it. Let's say you have two bands. Um, actually, I'll give you an example. For mine, I have uh, an iPod, I have an iPhone, but this is an iPod which I brought because I had the playlist on this, but I think they use the same randomizer. I had two songs, a friend of mine had a birthday, and I had to learn two songs to sing to her. One was Katy Perry's Roar, and one was The Cure's Just Like Heaven. Katy Perry, never heard a Katy Perry song before in my life. Freaking awesome tune. <laughs> that song is amazing, totally, totally empowering. Uh, and The Cure's Just Like Heaven. I had to learn them both, so I just, the way I learned songs, I learned them on guitar, and then I put, to learn the lyrics, I put them in my, in my ears, and just, as I'm riding around commuting, I just listen to them on job. And what I heard was, I heard Katy Perry, The Cure. 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 And then I stopped and I said, okay, the iPod randomizer is broken. And why would I say that? It's broken. It's not random. Why would I say that? Say that again, Danielle. Because I got a perfect, a perfect back and forth of the two songs. Think about flipping a coin. Flipping a coin. What do you expect, on average, to happen? On average, flip it. why do we use coin flips to decide things? Because 50% of the time you get heads, and 50% of the time you get tails. Does that mean that every time you flip, you get something different? No. What inevitably happens if you wait long enough in a run of coin flips? <laughs> inevitably what? <coughs> Say that again. It's, it's going to change. But also, what else is going to happen? You're going to get clusters of heads and tails, or Katy Perry and or The Cure. What I didn't see, here we go. But wouldn't that be a good thing because people don't normally want to hear Katy Perry? That's what Apple had to deal with. Thank you. Yeah, they don't want don't to hear, want to hear the Katy same Perry. Voice twice. You heard the song, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. Okay. But they don't want to hear, they don't oh, I see hear your the point. same song. They don't want to hear the same song over and over again. So what Apple did, at least what they released in their press release, was they fixed the randomizer so that once a song had been played, it was less likely to come up again. Mm for the next go round, does that make sense? Yeah. That's how Apple fixed it, and that's what I want to test today, is I want to test the, the, the shuffler and the randomizer on the iPod to see if it's actually showing that. Because yeah. there's two things to test, and I think hopefully you realize this is different. There's a shuffle command and a randomizer, and those are two different things. What I want to do is use the iPod to show you how they're different things, is that fair? Okay, let's, 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 I'll see you'll learn about some of my musical tastes. Which now include Katy Perry, I'm not gonna lie to you. This song is amazing. 
Okay, so you need this. There we go. Could you guys hit the lights back there? That'd be fantastic. And Chris, I'm going to need you momentarily. Not yet, though. So I, what I've got on the iPod <coughs> is I've got 10 tunes loaded. Actually, 10 snippets of tunes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out to the playlist called Chi Square, because this is what we're getting into today. And I'm going to hit Shuffle Command, and we're going to listen. That's a 10-minute song. song number 10 was going to be, it was going to be Billy Idol. Making me wait for Billy Idol. However, when I played the first song, which was Pat Benatar, did I know what was going to happen next? Not necessarily. I knew it was going to be one of the nine other songs because I kind of know how the iPod behaves. But I was pretty sure I had no idea what that ninth song, what that second song was going to be. All the way up to the ninth song. When I knew what the ninth song was, which was, I forget now, Billy, uh, Billy Bragg, I knew Billy Idol was coming next just because I know how this thing behaves. The problem is that's not random at all. The chance of that happening randomly, randomly, would be, you can calculate it actually, quit that, 10 factorial divided by, let's see if I can even do this, I think it can, 10 to the 10th power. Oh, there, I don't know if you can see that or not. That's the chance, so tight. That's the chance of having this thing randomly throwing songs out. Randomly throwing songs out <coughs> and hearing only every song exactly one time. 0. 0.0004. That's the chance. That's almost no chance. It can happen, but there's almost no chance. So my conclusion with a tiny p value is what? I haven't even said about hypotheses yet, but we kind of did. What, what's the conclusion based on a tiny p value? That it's not being random, that it's being something other than random. And this happened years ago. My first iPod, that, or my first MP3 player I ever had was called an iRiver. And my dad got it for me. He's like, this is better than an Apple. It wasn't. But he bought it for me, and it had a random command. And the random command played the exact same random playlist every time you press play. <laughs> so I wrote them a letter. I'm like, A, stop calling it random. B, do you want me to write a code for you? Because I'd be happy to write a code for you. <coughs> a random number generator. <laughs> and they fixed it. Not because of me, but they fixed it. And, they, and they, they, they constructed what's called a shuffle mechanism. Now, here's the difference between shuffle and random. Actually, you guys might be able to figure this out. 
Why does Apple call this Shuffle? I think it's a perfect name. Why is it called Shuffle? You're just taking the same 10 songs and shuffling them. Yes, imagine the 10 songs as 10 cards in a small deck. Change in order. Yes, you take the 10 cards, shuffle, and then deal. Once a card is dealt, it never gets played again. Good, yes? Kaylee? Because back, because I think it goes back to the same thing, that's what people want. They don't want the chance of getting the same song again. Yes, they if they want, want to hear a song, they can re rewind, if you rewind, it's a silly word anymore. Right. They can track back one. Right. Yes, you're right, I think that's what Apple did. But here's the deal, Shuffle always worked like this. Even back before people were complaining about it. So what we need to do is test the, the iPod randomizer. That's what we need to test, and I think I found out a way to do that. I think. I think what we can do, I think I have it set up right. We're going to start up, this is where we need Chris's help. I like to keep track of songs. Oh, yeah. oh, He's got to shake it. Yeah. Well, it's called shake the shelf. Shake the shovel 50 times. We'll talk about why 50 and not fewer than 50 momentarily. Let's collect some data, and because I think what we'll then test is the actual randomizer. If you interrupt the shuffle with a shake, then we'll actually kick the randomizer in and force it to, <coughs> go to pick the cards you've dealt back up, shuffle, and redeal another one. So in other words, we're dealing one card each time and then shuffling again and throwing. And then we can test that for randomness and see if that clusters. Like uh, like like I was playing. Does that does that make sense? Do you see the difference, friends? We're not going to let the playlist play all the way out. If you did, you would have ten factorial different playlists, and we would have to know how many of them would see would see ten factorial playlists with unique shuffles. But we're going to test it with random. I want ten to the tenth playlists. I want the same ten songs possible each time. Cool. All right. Let's do this, Chris. I want to beat you. You go ahead and practice. Practice shaking and shuffling. I want to get this thing restarted again. Oh, okay, what well, are you dropped to? <laughs> That's okay. Shit, brother. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because they also showed up 8 out of 16 times. And neither of those guys showed up too many times. That means that uh, uh, Anthrax Public Enemy didn't show up too many times, because they're above as well, yes? They're above. These guys didn't show up too many times. Yeah, they're at 6. Now this one's under. This one's under. But it's only one under. One under would be the same as one over. So if you're testing one under as too small, then one over and one under would be exactly the same because you're testing at 10%. So the only other ones I would have to concern about maybe would be Billy Idol and Social Distortion, but I'm not worried about them because they're three below five. If three above five was okay, three below will also be okay. It's just it'll be a flip-flop curve. What's the problem with doing it this way? What's the I was actually hinting at this particular problem seven weeks ago when you guys did your first confidence interval homework. What's the problem with doing it that way? What did, what, what did we just do by looking at each song individually? <coughs> we just ruined our confidence. Every one of those tests was at 95%. We just did 10 of them. We are now at about 60% confidence, which means we, we, we exponentially increase the number of ways we could be wrong because everyone can be wrong one in 20, and we did it 10 times. That's a problem. If we did it 20 times, it's almost a guarantee that we did more wrong, almost, on average. But even so, we're at 60% confidence, which, which is unfortunate. We, 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 the chance of them being wrong in at least one of them is 40%. That's, that's unacceptably high. So what we need to do, and we'll do this after the break, because you guys are getting that glazed donut look on your face. We're going to find out a way to test this all at once and generate that p-value right there. And also, have the hypotheses around that p-value. That's what I really want, is I want to have hypotheses around that, because you see there's a big p-value, but the big p-value tells you to believe the null hypothesis, but you don't know what the null hypothesis is. That's the problem. What is the null hypothesis? We'll come back and talk about that after the break. So let's take five, come back, collect data, I'll put it on the board for us, and then we'll analyze, yes? Yes.